Welcome back trainers. So we're going to be discussing PVP a little bit more seeing that it is going to be coming this year. I'm going to give you a little bit more insight on the CP cap I've been discussing. Uh, now I've been talking about that for a while now and I've never really given a visual on it. So we're just going to go ahead and take a look at a few teams that I set up just so you can have an idea as to what it would possibly look like. And we'll discuss a bit of strategy. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right. So first one up is going to be the little league with 7,000 CP and under. So how is it going to work? Well, you both go into the arena, the battle as you're picking your team and you'll have a number at the top. So the first Pokemon you pick, it'll indicate and show you 1,930 for the Metacham, right? And then you go into the Blossom and then it'll add on and continue to add on until you exceed or are ready to go in with the team that you have. Uh, it should be a clear visual. Uh, right at the top there, you're like, okay, I have 1,000 left. Let me throw in my Chansey. Okay, let's see what can counter this Pokemon. All right, we'll put in the Butterfree. Uh, so things like that. And if you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, 7,000 CP, all right. What if somebody decides to pick a Blissey and, you know, pick two of them, as a matter of fact, and just go in there with 10 CP Pokemon right behind it and just completely wall you? Well, I have a solution for that. Your Pokemon cannot go beyond like 1,200, 1,500 CP. Uh, so you're going to have to pick. Maybe you can pick one that has higher CP. And then the last two or three are going to have lower end CP depending on what strategy you want to throw in there. Now keep in mind the teams that you're going to see me show you. Don't don't expect this, <laughs> me to show you what I'm actually going to use. These are just a few thought out teams. Now as far as they go, the only ones that I would probably personally pick are going to be the small cup. And then the next one we're going to look at which is going to be the 16k cup. So you got to stay under 16,000 CP. This time around, the CP has to stay under like 2,900, maybe 3,000. So that should be pretty good. I think this would be the most common mode people would be picking. Uh, and as far as legendaries go, can you use these? No, there will be no legendaries allowed. There's going to be something we're going to discuss here in just a second about that. So once again, <laughs> just throwing teams together. But as far as they go, this one looks pretty solid. Uh, you do have three Pokemon that are going to be weak against water types here. So that's going to be a bit of a problem. Although I have the Lapras and then the Sceptile to counter that. But we're not going to be talking about strategies yet. No, that is going to be when PvP comes out. And yes, I will have really good tips on that. So this is a generally pretty good team here. Um, yeah, I mean, we're not really focused on the team itself. I kind of just threw it together. So uh, yeah, this is right under 16k. It's about 15 something exactly so there you go for the 16k medium cup on to the next one we have the 2000 and this one is about 1900 as well so it's right under and uh, once again not a team that i would personally pick but it looks like it might hold its own a bit so yeah that's the concept here and for this one it's just a free-for-all no matter what cp they have it's just no legendaries now possibly there will be a way to turn on legendaries you know options there um, or just like a customized match so keep that in mind just trying to give you a visual on what you can maybe expect now let's go ahead and go into the legendaries all right so this one is uh pretty interesting it's going to be basically a legendary mode right where you can just have a full team of those and just go to town no cp cap no anything you can throw in other Pokemon if you want to, but you're better off not to. And, well, you may want a Blissey and a Machamp. And Mewtwo, maybe? You know, Mewtwo's good, depending on what you're trying to counter. Everything in here is not going to be really affected, unless you had, like, a Shadow Ball going up against the Lugia. But other than that, you may want to switch, let's see here, um, Ho-Oh. And we're not going to put in a Legendary Let's just say a Blissey, right? So there's going to be no limit on this one. This is basically the free-for-all. This will be a set mode, and then, of course, there will be a customized mode. So there you have it, uh, an actual visual on what the CP cap might look like when we get PvP, if this is even going to be a thing. This is just a theory that I've had for a while, and I just wanted to give you a clear sight on what it might look like. Okay, so I know I said I wasn't going to give any of my team information out, but... I put a team together here that I thought would be pretty good. Now, if you're thinking right on, really? Well, 
that's just pretend that's Rhyperior, okay? And say it has a quick ground move and then a charge rock move. All right, so it has a bit of ground coverage and then that rock coverage that I need. Um, and that's it right there. Check it out. So you're going to want to have a Blissey. The only reason that I'm putting that Blissey in there is because I know the pretty much everybody's going to be doing that. Um, so hopefully there's a way to like, that'd be funny if there's an option that's like, turn on or off Blisseys. <laughs> because literally it, it's, it is what it is. You know, it is a tank, right? And same with the Chanseys. I mean, I could see people using a Blissey and a Chansey. Although the, it would just be so little damage with the Chanseys. It would be funny to see their attempts. But I could see them definitely walling people. <laughs> oh man, PvP. I can't wait, guys. It's going to be amazing. So, we have the Lapras coming in. I thought that was a solid way to enter the battle. Seeing that people are quite fond with their dragon types. Uh, maybe I can hit them quite hard with my ice water. Depending on what uh, I have going on there. And then we have the Victory Bell lined up next. Because what is Lapras? Weak against rock and electric types among a few others, but um, fighting as well, right? So we have Victory Bell, who's going to be helping counter all of that. You got the Victory Bell coming in, quite a good counter for the Lapras. And then what is Victory Bell weak against? Is going to be weak against fire types, right? Flying types. Then we have the Rhyperior to come in with those two counters that I mentioned earlier to help with that, right? And then we have pretending to be Rhyperior. Uh, it's going to be countering the things that uh, Victory Bell is going to be weak against to a degree. Uh, they kind of uh, complement each other. Uh, so the Rhyperior has that ground and rock move, hypothetically, hoping. Uh, and then we have the Machamp because you're going to absolutely need a Machamp. Some sort of fighting coverage on your teams. Uh, and then the Blissey just to stall them up. You know, if they are just um, have a horrible lineup and they didn't set up their team correctly to counter a Blissey, well... It's done. It's game over. And then the Charizard for a bit of fire and uh, air coverage because of those fighting types. So it does have that two charge bar move, Blast Burn, which is fairly nice. And other than Charizard, um, for fire types, there's uh, we have Blaziken, you know, it's okay. And then Flareon, if you have Flamethrower. For PvP, you're going to definitely want a two charge bar move. One charge bars are going to be good, right? They're going to be okay, depending on what your quick move is. Um, but more than likely, I can see it now. I've been saying it for so long. You're going to want a two-charge bar move. And not only that, you're not going to want the same kind of move for every Pokemon's type. So right on, ground and rock. Uh, you might want to have a surprise like Donphin with counter and play rough. And uh, like Ninetales with solar beam. Those kind of things are, are going to just creep up. With the things that people are like, what is this ridiculous move set? Um, well, the, the people who know the main series games are like, oh, okay, yeah, they understand what's going on here. It's a lot of the other people who don't quite get it, but soon, in due time, oh, they will learn. So Metagross is going to kind of be a threat. Uh, it's going to be weak to ground and fire types. It could possibly wall pretty good. Now, if it receives a community day, with a two charge bar move, say Meteor Mash, which is gonna be extremely good, that thing's gonna be a killer. If you don't have fire or ground, you're gonna be in a bit of trouble and it will stall you up. Um, that's not just for the main series games. I mean, it's kind of tanky. Yes, this is Pokemon Go and you can just mash your way through, but still, you're gonna to want to make sure you're covered because Metagross is actually gonna be fairly good in PvP, but it just needs a two charge bar move. There's also going to be a lot of other Pokemon introduced to Pokemon Go when Gen 4 comes out. So this team right here is just a silly little team just to give you a visual. Actually, I wouldn't even call it really silly. It's actually fairly good. Um, and if you're thinking also, why are you using the Victory Bell and not Sceptile or maybe even, you know, Exeggutor or Alolan Exeggutor? Alolan Exeggutor is too weak. It has a double weakness and no thank you. Um, Exeggutor is good, but its quick move is is garbage all right I, there i said i was gonna he hesitate for a second but it is garbage bullet seed is not good um and solar beam obviously is strong but it's a huge charge bar you're gonna be dead most of the time before you're able to get it off so victory bell is just hitting the sweet spot unlike septile it has a very nice quick move and its charge move is strong as well i mean three of them 
I mean, come on, that thing is a killer. I've done so many raids with this thing and it's just been a beautiful thing. And that's another thing to keep in mind. These other Pokemon that are not top tier and all these other people out here powering up only the top tier Pokemon, it's when PvP comes around, if it is what we think it's gonna be, if they do it right, you're going to want to have powered up or power up some of those lower tier Pokemon like Metacham and like uh, this one right here, even possibly a Slowking Water Gun and Fire Blast? Are you serious? Yeah, let's go, let's go look at that really quick. That's just another thing to name um, amongst many, many others. So let's go ahead, uh, Slow King, and it's not that one, it's actually Poke, there we go, Water Gun and Fire Blast. This is going to be another good Pokemon to use. Yes, it is one charge bar move, but it, it's somewhat tanky, it, you know, it can take a hit or two. If you're going up against, um, what electric Pokemon, uh, Jolteon. Uh, you're going to be able to get that Fire Blast off, although none of your moves are going to be worthy. You might as well switch at that point, but who knows how the battle mechanics are going to work. Is it going to even be worth switching? Um, because that was a big part of Pokemon in the main series. And yes, I know this is not the main series, so I have to wait and see how they introduce it. I can come up with more theories on how PvP is going to work and this and that, but I thought I'd just stick to the fundamentals I've been talking about for a while and show you a couple of strategies as far as moves but if you've been watching me you already know uh because i talk about this all the time but a move set like that water gun and fire blast absolutely fantastic so there you go trainers hope you enjoyed this video on pvp topic and i will be catching you very soon take care